Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Now, in this session, we're going to look at God's plan and promises about your physical health, the second of seven key areas. And let's begin with this verse from the Bible, which says this. I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Now, that's from 3 John, verse 2. The Bible says, I want you to be as physically healthy as you are spiritually healthy. Did you know the Bible says that? Now, the truth is, we already know what to do about physical health. It's not rocket science. To get healthy, you've got to eat right. You've got to eat less. You've got to exercise. You've got to get the proper amount of sleep. You've got to lower your stress level. We all know these things. It's nothing new. So what I want to do in this session is I want to focus on the motivation for getting healthy and staying healthy. It's not just so you can look good or so you can feel good or other people can compliment you. There's a much more important reason for you to be healthy, and it has eternal implications. The problem for many Christians is even if God told them what he wanted them to do with their lives, they don't have the energy to do it because they are so physically out of shape, they couldn't do what God wants them to do if he told them to. God wants you to take care of your body, not only because that's where we live, but it's because that's where he lives. The Bible says he lives in us, and he works through us. And anything God's going to do in your life, he's going to do through your physical body. So if we're unhealthy and we're out of energy, then there's a lot that God cannot accomplish through us. This is a totally different motivation than you've ever heard about for being fit and being healthy. What I want to do in this session is to look at what God says about the importance of your body, your physical body, and your physical health. And you're going to see how physical health is actually a spiritual discipline. And just as we talked in the first session, there are habits that you have to develop. But in order to develop these habits, you've got to have the correct motivation. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 is the classic passage on the body in Scripture. It says this, Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me. In other words, I've got the freedom to do anything I want, but I will not be mastered by anything. Now, what is God saying here? Well, he's saying that some things in life are not necessarily wrong. They're just not necessary. They're not beneficial. They're not helpful. And God says, your life is too short to do things that are not necessary. And he says, I'm not going to be mastered by anything. In other words, I'm not going to let anything, whether it's food or drink or sleep or sex or anything, I'm not going to let anything dominate my life because whatever dominates your life is your God. Paul says, I'm not going to be addicted to anything. That means I'm not going to be mastered by anything. The Bible says this, food is for the stomach and stomach is for food. That's a quote from classic history. But he says, God will destroy both. That's what the world says. In other words, they're not going to last forever. That's not the real reason you're here. In other words, you're not here just to look good. Now, he also goes on to say this, the body isn't meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord, that's Jesus, from the dead, and here's the good news, he will raise us also. How was Jesus raised? Physically. How are you going to be raised? He's going to physically raise up your body. The Bible says, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? So flee sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple? By the way, that's where that phrase comes from. And, you know, you hear it in, in society where my body is a temple. Where does it come from? It comes from this passage of the Bible. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? That's the rest of it. Who is in you, whom you have received from God, you are not your own. Listen to this. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. In other words, Jesus paid for you on the cross. Therefore, he ends this passage on the body saying this, therefore, honor God with your body. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 to 20. Now, this passage and others uh, in Scripture teach us six radical 
counterculture things about your body. And this is going to blow your mind. But it's what the Bible says about your body. I want you to write these things down. Because until you understand these, you're never going to have help in the second key area of your life. We talked about spiritual health. Now we're talking about physical health. Now the first thing the Bible teaches is this. My body is God's property. In other words, it belongs to him. Now that concept is completely counterculture, particularly in America, but also all around the world. Because we're all taught growing up, my body's my own body, and I'll do whatever I want with it. It's my body, and I'll, if I want to blow it, if I want to waste it, if I want to mess it up, it's okay. God says, no, you won't. It's not your body. God says this, I own your body. I created it, and I just loaned it to you. It's not yours because you didn't make it. You didn't create your body. Now think about this. Everything you see, the beauty behind me and everything you see in the world, everything you see in life is created by God. And the creator owns it because he made it. You don't really own anything in life. It's loaned to you by God. You didn't bring anything into the world. You're not taking anything out of the world. It's just loaned to you for the 60 or 80 or maybe 90 years that you live on this planet. So think about this. You don't really own your money. You don't really own your talents. They were loaned to you by God. You don't own your time. It's loaned to you by God. You don't even own your body. It was loaned to you, uh, and it's going to be loaned to you for maybe up to 100 years. But that's not really that long, considering in light of eternity. You just get to use it while you're here. God owns it, and he loans it to you. Your body is God's property. The Bible says, you created every part of me. You put me together in my mother's womb. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. That's what David wrote in Psalm 139. Now, everything God makes, he makes for a purpose. God has never made anything without a purpose. And God has never made any person without a purpose. God didn't give you your body without a purpose, so we can't compartmentalize it and say that all that really matters is my spirit. And if I don't take care of my body, I'm out of shape, I'm unfit, I don't, I don't make the most of what God has given me, it doesn't matter. That is a total myth. Both your spirit and your body matter to God. Both your spiritual health and your physical health matter to God. Now, that leads to the second radical truth that the Bible teaches, and it says this in 1 Corinthians 6. God expects me to manage my body. In other words, I'm not the owner, but I am the manager. I am to take care of it. The, uh, uh, the Bible tells us that I'm the steward. That's the old English word of the word manager. My body is a gift from God on loan to me, and one day you and I are going to stand before God, and we're going to give an account of how well we took care of our bodies. Paul says this, I will not be mastered by anything. That's verse 12 of the passage we looked at. In other words, he says, I am responsible for the decisions I make about my health and my body. And he said, I am not to let anything dominate my life, whether it's food, whether it's television, whether it's sex, whether it's drugs, whether it's a drink or anything. And he said, I can't blame anybody else if I mistreat it. Think about this. One day, you are going to stand before God, and he's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? In the book, Purpose Driven Life, I teach that life is a, a, a test, it's a trust, and it's a temporary assignment. And life is preparation for eternity. In other words, this life is getting ready for the next. You're going to spend far more time on that side of death than on this side. And here on this side, the Bible says God is testing you. Why are you on earth? God is testing you to see what he will be able to trust you with in eternity. Are you listening? This life is a test. And one day, he's going to ask you, what did you do with what I gave you? Including, what did you do with the body I gave you? What did you do with the mind I gave you? What did you do with the time I gave you? What did you do with the opportunities and the abilities and the freedom and the opportunities and the intelligence and the wealth and the money? What, what did you do with everything I gave you? This life is a test. And God is watching to see how, he managed, how you manage the gifts that he's given you. Now, one of those gifts is your body. 
Now here's the third thing that the Bible teaches about your body. My body will be resurrected after I die. Write that down. My body will be resurrected after I die. You're going to get a new version. It's a 2.0 version called the resurrected body. Now right now, you're living in version 1.0 of you, the body you've got right now. In heaven, you're going to get version 2.0 because the Bible says your body will be a resurrected body. See, some people think when you get to heaven, you're just going to be some kind of uh, amorphous spirit just kind of floating around on a cloud. Uh, other people have this idea that when you get to heaven, you're going to be like an angel with wings. You're not going to be an angel. You're not going to have wings in heaven. You're not going to walk around in a white robe. Angels are angels and people are people. You will be recognized by everybody who knew you on earth in heaven. In fact, you'll be recognized by everybody. Some people, the idea is that in heaven, you're going to sit on, uh, uh, on a cloud playing a harp with wings. That would not be heaven, friend. To me, that would be hell. <laughs> I can't think of anything more boring than that. And who says heaven has to be all white? Who do you think created color? God did. All the colors in the world and in the universe God created, then you think he's going to take you forever to a place that's only white? Not a chance. Why do you think God created all the sights and sounds of creation that he gave us? Why do you think he created music and then gave us ears to hear it? Even in this broken world, there's a lot of beauty. Now, if, if in a broken world there's all this beauty, can you imagine heaven is going to be perfect? It's going to be a multicolored extravaganza, multi-sensory, multi-pleasurable that you can't even imagine because our brains aren't big enough right now. And you know what's going to happen when you go to heaven? You get version 2.0 of your body. But it's going to be recognized by other people. The Bible says this, by his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will also raise us. Now, do you see how important your body is? Because God says, I'm not through with it. It's so important, you're not going to leave it. He says, I'm going to put it back together after you die, and I'm going to resurrect it. It doesn't matter if it's decayed in the ground or even cremated. God says, I'm going to resurrect it, and I'm going to put it back together in version 2.0 of you. Now, the God who created you is certainly able to recreate you just as surely as he promises that he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Now, another radical truth that the Bible teaches is this. My body is connected to the body of Christ. My body is connected to the body of Christ. Now, you may have not thought about that before, but the Bible says that your body, not just your soul, not just your spirit, your body is connected to the body of Christ. And that passage we read earlier, verse 15, says this. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? That's verse 15 of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. That's why God cares about how you treat your body. It's connected to his body, the body of Christ. Now, Jesus gave his body for you, and he wants you to honor him with your body. You know, of all people, Christians should care about our physical health and how we use our bodies more than anybody else, because how you treat your body is a reflection on the body of Christ. It is a testimony to the world. Now, I'm not talking about overindulging in beauty products or, you know, physical workout that everybody's supposed to go around and be some kind of he-man, muscular bodybuilder. No, this is not about vanity. You can go to an extreme. It's simply about making the most of what you've been giving, honoring God with the body that you've been given and representing him well by being as healthy as you can be. It's about being part of the body of Christ. Now, here's the fifth radical truth that the Bible teaches about my body, and it's this. The Holy Spirit lives in my body. Write that down. The Holy Spirit lives in my body. Wow. God put his spirit in your body body. That's why the Bible says your body is a temple. Verse 19, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? That's verse 19. That means God takes up residence inside of you when you put your faith in Christ. He puts his spirit inside your body. You become a temple of God. Now the Bible says this, don't you know you're God's temple? 
Don't you know that God's Spirit lives in you? If we thought about that on a daily basis, if we made that a habit and we began to think, my body is the temple of God, don't you think we would treat our bodies differently? God's temple is sacred, and you are that temple. Verses 16 and 17 of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 tells us that. Now, throughout Scripture, God has always had a dwelling place on earth. First, he dwelt in the tabernacle, the tent that was designed according to the specifications that he gave to Moses. And the tabernacle was God's dwelling place on earth. Then later, God gave David uh, instructions for building the temple, different from the tabernacle in Jerusalem, a temple of stone. And God dwelt in that building, in a temple. Where does God dwell today? In you, in me, in those of us who put our trust in Christ. You are the temple, a temple of flesh. You are God's dwelling place. The Bible says we are the temple of the living God. Now let me ask you a question. If you were walking down the street and you saw somebody vandalizing a house of worship, they're drawing graffiti on it or they're breaking windows or they're, they're destroying this temple, this church, how would you feel about that? You'd probably get mad. Uh, you'd either call the police or you'd try to stop them yourself. because It's not right to vandalize something that's dedicated to the worship of God. But you know what? You and I vandalize the temple of God all the time. Every time we put junk food in our bodies, every time we abuse our bodies, every time we go without sleep, and we, every time we stress out our bodies, every time we misuse and abuse our bodies, we don't take care of it, we're vandalizing the temple of God. God expects you and me to take care of his temple. Now, there's one more truth. The sixth truth of this passage is this. Jesus bought my body on the cross. Jesus bought my body, he bought your body on the cross. Jesus didn't just pay for your soul when he died on the cross. He paid for your body too. That's what verse 20 says. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, this is what the Bible says, honor God with your body. Doesn't say honor God with your spirit. Honor God with your body. Jesus paid for your real estate. If you want to know how much you're worth to God, you look at the cross. With arms outstretched and nail-pierced hands, Jesus says, this is how much I love you. This is how valuable you are to me. I don't care if you're Buddhist or Baptist or Jewish or Mormon or Methodist or atheist or whatever, Jesus still died on the cross for you. And Jesus said, this is how much I love you. God has never made anybody he doesn't love. I love you this much. Jesus says, I'd rather die than live without you. I came all the way from heaven to earth to do this for you. That's how valuable you are to me. And that's why he says, honor God with your body. Now, how do you do that? Well, Paul answers that question in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Look at this verse. Romans 12, 1, Paul says, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies, there he goes back, he doesn't say offer your spirit, offer your bodies as living sacrifices. You know the problem with the living sacrifice? It can crawl off the altar, and we do that all the time. Offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Did you know that worship is giving your body to God? He didn't say offer your will. He says, offer your physical body. Why? Because that's the only place you can serve God. You can't serve God without a body. Offer your body as a living sacrifice. This is your spiritual worship. Did you know that taking care of your body is an act of worship? Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Time out, Rick. You're telling me that taking care of my body, taking care of my health is an act of worship? No, I'm not telling you that. God is. Romans 12:1. You do it out of worship to God. You're doing it to please God. You're doing it out of gratitude for all he's done for you. You're doing it so that he can use you for his purposes and his glory. Managing your physical health is a spiritual discipline. It is a habit that you have to develop. Now, remember in the first session, we talked about God has promises and premises. There are all kinds of promises about health in the Bible. 
and about God blessing your body in the Bible, but you've got to do it God's way. You have to have the premises for the promises. You know, in John chapter 5, Jesus met a man who had been ill. He'd been sick for 38 years. And Jesus walks up to this guy, and he asks him a very important question. He says this, do you want to get well? That's John chapter 5 or 6. You say, wait a minute, you've got to be kidding me. This guy's been sick for three decades, nearly four, and the first thing Jesus says is, do you want to get well? Really? That's a pretty profound question when you think about it. He's been sick 38 years. You would think, well, of course he wants to get well. But Jesus says, do you really want to get well? Or do you just want to stay the same way you are in the body you are, in the sick body you've got? Now, that's my question I think Jesus wants to ask you today. Do you want to get well? Do you want to get healthy? A year from today, do you want to be in better shape, better physical health than you are today? Or are you just going to keep on being the, you know, out of shape person you are? During your discussion time, I want you to talk about just one thing, one little step that you could take one small step toward better physical health. I'm not asking you to change everything in your life. Just think of one thing that you could do, that you might do. No, one thing that you will do. Then I want you to invite your group to hold you accountable to your commitment. Now, if you want to go deeper in this issue, this issue of spiritual, I mean, physical health, uh, we've got another small group curriculum that I've done called the Daniel Plan. I highly recommend that. Uh, you can read about the Daniel Plan in your study guide, and there's a whole other set of videos that I've done to help you on this one issue. It's that important. But let me just summarize this. God wants you to be physically healthy as much as he wants you to be spiritual healthy, spiritually healthy, because you cannot accomplish all the things he wants to do in and through your life for his kingdom unless you've got the energy to do it. So why don't we make a commitment together to get in shape, to get healthy, and to work on this second key area of our lives. God says your body matters as much as your spirit. Let's bow our heads and let me lead you in prayer as we close. Father, I, I know that uh, we've stepped on some toes in this session because none of us take as good a care of our bodies as we ought to. And yet, we see these reasons that you've given to us on why physical health is as important as spiritual health. First, Father, you created our bodies, so we're to take care of them. Second, Jesus, you paid for our bodies on the cross. Then, Holy Spirit, you live in our bodies. So, Father, if you created it, and Jesus, you died for it, and Spirit, you lived in it, you expect us to take care of our bodies. Help us to never forget that our bodies belong to you, God, not us. Help us to remember that our bodies are connected to the body of Christ. And one day, help us to remember that they will be resurrected in version 2.0. Forgive us for all the times that we've misused our bodies and abused our health. We commit to join in a journey of health and to follow your health plan and claim your health promises for your glory and for our growth. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I hope you enjoy your discussion time together, and we'll see you in our next session. God bless you.